What is going on everyone? This video is about how to add Amazon Redshift tables into the AWS Glue catalog. By the end of this video, you'll be able to create Glue jobs that are referencing these tables directly from the Glue catalog, leveraging AWS Glue Studio as seen here, add your tables into an AWS Glue job using the from catalog method seen here, and leveraging the AWS CDK for pandas to connect to your database using the database connection. In order to achieve this, this video will cover how to create a database connection for Redshift in the AWS Glue service, create a Glue crawler service role in IAM, create a Glue crawler to discover all our tables in our database, and then finally how to add a VPC endpoint for the VPC that Redshift is in. All right, so the tables we're going to be adding to our Glue catalog are these seven that are found within the public schema in the dev database part of my Redshift cluster. So to get us started, the first step within the AWS Glue service, we're going to navigate towards connections. And we're going to scroll down to the connection side. And as you can see, we have no connections. We're going to go to create a new connection and we're going to add the credentials to our Redshift cluster. So I'm just going to call it Redshift database and for connection type, it's going to be Amazon Redshift. If you require SSL connection, you can toggle that on. All right, so for the connection access, because we've toggled the connection type to be Amazon Redshift, we select the drop down. we should see the Redshift cluster. So we're just going to select that. So this is the cluster I want to connect to. Next step is to put in the database name. So mine is currently dev. And we have two ways for adding the credential type. So we can just put in a username and password. The second option is using AWS Secret Manager. So if I just select this, and if we've added our credentials to Secret Manager from the dropdown, we should be able to see our secret and select that. If you're going to be using an AWS secret to store your credentials, you have to make sure that your Amazon Glue crawler role has access to retrieve this secret. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and use username and password. I'm just going to go and put the password in here and hit create connection. All right, so if we scroll down, we should see that the connection has been added here. So the next step is to create a Glue crawler service role so that it will have access to crawling our Redshift database when we run our Glue crawler. So if we go to the IAM service, I'm going to click on roles and we're going to create a new role. Now for trusted entity type, it's going to be AWS service. And if we scroll down, we need to select Glue here. So just going to click on that make sure that we're toggling glue and click next. And next we're going to have to add the policy name to connect to our role. So the policy already exists. It's a policy that is managed by AWS. So if I just type in glue, you're going to look for AWS glue service role. I'm just going to select that and hit next. Let's just call this glue crawler. And as you can see here, the trusted entities is Amazon Glue. So we know that the Glue service can assume this role to do what we want, which is good. And as you can see, the AWS Glue service policy has been attached to the role, which is good. And now we're just going to hit create role. Great. So now that our role has been successfully created, the next step is to create a Glue crawler to discover all of our tables. So I'm going to go ahead and head back to the Glue service. And if we click on crawlers, we're going to go ahead and create a new crawler. So I'm going to call it Redshift Crawler. Go to next. So next we have to configure our data source configuration. It's asking if our data is already mapped to a glue table. So because it is not, we're going to just make sure we're leaving not yet. And now we're going to go to add a data source. And now we're going to go scroll down to say JDBC and for connection, we're going to add that Redshift connection that we created earlier. And for included path, this is the path in our Redshift database for the tables that we want to bring in. So what's nice is when you're developing a crawler, you can actually limit, you know, which tables are being crawled and added to the glue catalog. So in my case, I want all of them within the dev database. So the first part is going to be dev and the schema is public. And then I want all tables within this schema. So I'm just going to add percent. Another option is we can add additional metadata. So if we had comments on our columns, we can select that and now we'll add it to the glue catalog. And the second option is raw data types. So if you wanted to keep the data types from Amazon Redshift, we can click on this. However, if we wanted to convert it to the Hive compatible types, we can just leave this blank. And let's just go ahead and say add JDBC data source. 
Right, that looks good. Let's hit next. Now we're going to select that glue roll that we just created called glue crawler. And for security configuration, we can leave security configuration blank. If you want to enable at rest encryption on your logs published to CloudWatch, then you're going to have to configure this here. I'm just going to go ahead and select next. And now the target database. So this is where in the glue catalog, the database that these tables are going to be stored in. So if I select from the drop down, I have a couple. I'm just going to put it in my default database. Um, depending on how you want to store your data, maybe you have a separate database for all your Redshift tables. You can go ahead and create a new database by clicking this button here before moving ahead. I'm not going to add a prefix, so I'm going to leave this blank and let's just scroll down. So under advanced options, these are some parameters to control how the glue crawler is going to populate the database. So anytime there's an update on the definition, it's going to now update the data catalog. And I also have selected here to mark the table as deprecated in the data catalog. So in the event, let's say a table is deleted, it's not going to disappear from the glue catalog. However, it's going to note that the table has been deprecated. So we can really customize how we want this information to show up in the glue catalog after a crawl. All right, next is the crawler schedule. I'm going to leave it on demand, but if you wanted this to run, you know, on a schedule daily, hourly, you can do that here as well. And then let's just go ahead and click next. So that looks good. And we're going to go ahead and create our crawler. Great. So now we see that the state is ready. Our crawler is ready to run. So before we can go ahead and run this, one thing I need to do for my account is I haven't added a VPC endpoint for the glue crawler in order to be able to successfully crawl my Redshift database. If you don't end up configuring your VPC endpoint, you'll end up with a similar error message after you attempt to run your crawler saying that it cannot find the S3 endpoint or NAT gateway. So in order to do this, we have to head over to VPC. If you've already done this step, then you can disregard this next step here. And the reason we need to do this is our AWS Redshift cluster is in a VPC. So we need to set up an endpoint in order to connect to it. So we're going to scroll down to find endpoints. Now we're going to go ahead and create a new endpoint. And under service, we're going to look for S3. And we want to make sure we're selecting gateway for S3. And now if we scroll down, we need to select the VPC that our Amazon Redshift cluster is stored in. So I know it's in my default VPC, so I'm just going to go ahead and select this one here. I want to make sure that we're selecting our root table. And now for policy, if you need to set up a VPC endpoint policy, you can configure this here. But for my case, I'm just going to leave it for full access. And let's just go ahead and, and click Create Endpoint. Great, so now that our VPC endpoint has been successfully configured, we can navigate back to our Glue crawler. If we click on crawlers, now we'll see our crawler is there. All right, now we can go ahead and run our glue crawler, which is going to add all our tables in our Redshift schema into our glue catalog default database. So let's just click on that crawler and hit run. I'm going to skip ahead in the video until the state changes to be stopping. It can take a minute or two for the crawler to successfully run. All right, as you can see, the state has changed to stopping. And under table change here, we can see that seven tables have been created. Great, so now if we navigate to databases and we click on our default database, and if I hit refresh, we now see that our seven tables have been added. And for classification, you can see that it has Redshift, so we know that the source is Redshift here. So there you go, we've successfully added our Redshift tables into the Glue catalog. Another thing to point out is the naming convention here. You can see that it got the database name for the first part, and then Public was the schema. Finally, the last suffix is the name of the table in Redshift. So I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks so much for watching. And if you think this video will be helpful for others, please hit that like button. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing for more videos related to data engineering and AWS. Thanks again and see you next time.